Hello and welcome to Shell Point Today for Wednesday, March the 16th. I'm Rich Nation. On today's show, we'll hear about the assisted living springtime tea and tours from Rita Southern, as well as the medical breakthroughs and discovery seminar sponsored by the Legacy Foundation. But first, we'd like to remind you that the Computer Club will hold their meeting in the Manatee Room at 2.15 p.m. tomorrow. Mike Peterson will conclude his series on what computer technicians wish their customers knew before calling for service. And you can wrap up your day tomorrow by celebrating St. Patrick's Day with the Irish dancers from Sarasota's Drake School of Irish Dance. Led by head instructor Ashley Williamson Bippen and dance master Carl Drake, this team competed on America's Got Talent, making it all the way to the second round in 2009. This event takes place at 7.30 in the Grand Cypress Room. Be sure to call the service desk and get your ticket for the entertaining event. The first day of spring is just days away, and that means so are the Assisted Living Springtime Tea and Tours hosted by Rita Southern, Director of Assisted Living. These events are important for discovering all about transitioning through the different levels of care and support services available to you. These informative presentations will cover things like services and support, the differences in the three assisted living facilities, and your case manager's role in helping you transition through the continuum of care. Standing by is someone who can explain this much better than I can. Here's Rita Southern. Hi, I'm Rita Southern. I'm the Director of Assisted Living and Resident Support Services. And I'm here today to invite you to our Spring Assisted Living Tea and Tour events. Each year, we give residents the opportunity to learn about the assisted living services offered here at Shell Point and to provide you with the opportunity to take a tour of the King's Crown, the Arbor, and the Springs. These events will include an informational presentation, refreshments, meet and greet with your case managers, and the opportunity to tour each building. Residents are welcome to bring your families with you if, if they're visiting. The Arbor Tea and Tour will be held on Tuesday, March 22nd at 9 a.m. The Springs Tea and Tour will be held on Thursday, March 24th at 2.30 p.m. And the King's Crown Tea and Tour will be held on Thursday, March 31st at 10 a.m. If you are interested in attending one or more of these events, please call 454-2077 today to RSVP. You are welcome to attend a full presentation and tour at one event, and if you just want to tour the other two buildings, we're happy to accommodate that as well. Please let us know that you would like a tour only when you are RSVPing. I look forward to seeing you soon. And now it's time to get a preview of what to expect at tomorrow's Medical Breakthroughs and Discovery Seminar on Alzheimer's Disease. Jeff Corey of the Legacy Foundation sits down with Dr. Fred Sheriff from Neuropsychiatric Research Center of Southwest Florida to talk about the presentation. Dr. Sheriff is leading important clinical drug trials in Fort Myers, and you'll get to hear all about it at 2.15 in the Village Church tomorrow. Here's Jeff and Dr. Sheriff to give us a preview. Hi, I'm Jeff Corey from the Legacy Foundation here at Shell Point, and I'm joined today by Dr. Fred Sheriff from the Neuropsychiatric Center of Southwest Florida. Dr. Fred, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you again. I know you've spent a lot of time here at Shell Point, and uh, we're so grateful for the services you provide to our residents. And uh, we're talking today a little bit about an upcoming seminar, talking about Alzheimer's and treatment and care, uh, some of the latest advances in research. Uh, can you give us a little idea about what you'll be talking about on that day? Well, sure, and it's quite an honor to come back here and uh, talk about this epidemic because obviously we are faced with it and we probably are at ground zero in southwest Florida and Shell Point with the potential of this disease. So hopefully we're going to be talking about how the demographics have really put it together for this area to have this devastating disease, but also the incredible opportunities that are around including clinical trials, including breakthroughs that happened in 2015 that we've been involved with. Hmm. 
Can you tell us a little bit about some of the advances in research? I mean, I think our residents are always looking for some hope. A lot of us have been touched by family members with the suffering with Alzheimer's. And can you give, give us a little idea about what are some of the, the greatest, latest and greatest advances in Alzheimer's research? Well, I mean, the interesting thing is that uh, we, many people have heard this before, but we've learned more about the brain in the last 10 years than in the last 1,000 years. And what we've really learned is that Alzheimer's disease is complicated but also, I think there's been some great advances. Uh, in 1906, Al Lois Alzheimer identified plaques and tangles as the real cause. We now know what those plaques and tangles are composed of. And in 2015, a uh, pharmaceutical company named Biogen, and we were involved with those trials, showed for the first time that clearing the plaques with monoclonal antibodies stopped the progression of the disease. Hmm. And that was a real groundbreaker because hundreds of trials have failed previously, so now there may be something that can stop the progression. Hmm. What exactly causes Alzheimer's, and I mean, what do people, are there some telltale signs hmm. that you look for in, in a person that when they're first diagnosed? Well, it's interesting. Uh, this disease actually starts 20 to 30 years before you have a symptom, hmm. and it's caused by many factors, but it seems to be fundamentally an accumulation of abnormal proteins in the brain of people that are susceptible and that causes brain cells to die. But the problem is that we all have cognitive reserves, so it slowly is working its way through your brain, killing brain cells, but you don't have any symptoms. That's why we're so, so uh, vigorous about early detection and testing in your 40s and 50s. Hmm. Tell us a little bit more about your research center. I know we've had a number of residents here through the years that have been part of a clinical trial. Um, tell us a little bit about what a clinical trial involves and how much time a person has to dedicate to that process. And Well, I've been very blessed by putting together a, a team of individuals that are totally dedicated to this disease, and we've been doing trials for about 20 years. Hmm. So a clinical trial, every medicine that we use in the United States, when you go to the drugstore with a prescription, has been part of a clinical trial because we demand in the United States the highest standard that it proves in a placebo-controlled, double-blind trial that it really does work. And since the placebo effect, your mother, grandmother's chicken noodle soup for your cold, mm. has up to a 40 to 50 percent chance of improving you, that's the placebo effect, these trials really have to prove with large numbers of individuals that what you're doing is separating from placebo. So we have these trials available. We have all kinds of trials for individuals that are in different stages of disease, hmm. that have different medical problems that we try to fit into a trial. And it really gives people the opportunity to do something that they can't get anywhere else. And there's also, interestingly, studies that show that just participating in a trial, no matter what you get, even placebo, improves people. Hmm. Well, we're very fortunate here in the Fort Myers area to have a world-class facility and operation like you have that we can benefit from. I mean, is the word cure, is that something for Alzheimer's that is, is a pipe dream at this point? Do you, do you see something well, coming down in the near future? I mean, as we all know, President Obama started an Alzheimer's initiative in 2010, and he was talking about finding a cure by 2025. I think that's a very optimistic type of uh, goal. Hmm. I think the realization, though, is that since this disease starts early, since uh, African Americans and Hispanics get the disease twice as much as non-African Americans, hmm. and we know why they get the disease because they have four modifiable risk factors that aren't very well treated, hypertension, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, and heart disease. So we now know that those things are things we need to take care of early. Hmm. We know that uh, exercise is important. We know that protecting your head is important. So we're into a prevention stage as well as just clinical trials, hmm. educating people of how important it is to uh, protect your brain early because it can have profound effects later on. Hmm. So things like brain games or, I mean, if, uh, we've always said here at Shell Point, keeping your mind active is something that keeps you young and vibrant. And, and uh, so those yeah, are the so, sorts of things. That... So, so staying young, vibrant, active, uh, brain games certainly can help. They certainly don't prevent the onset of this disease, and there's no data to support it, but we think that's helpful. Hmm. But having all the uh, active lifestyle issues like exercise, having interactions with other human beings, hobbies, painting, music, 
those kind of things are really ultimately so important in hmm. keeping a brain healthy. Hmm. I mean, we have lots of residents that are caregivers, you know, supporting a loved one who has Alzheimer's or dementia. Do you have some helpful tips for, for those fo sorts of folks who need some encouragement to how to handle the disease and the progression, both you know, psychologically, mm. socially, spiritually? Well, well, they unfortunately are carrying the burden, and as we know, most of those individuals are women. So women really have an unfair burden with both having more Alzheimer's disease than men and also being the caregivers for people with Alzheimer's disease. Mm. So it's so important to uh, get the services that you can get, get some time off, don't get burned out, take advantage of what's available here at Shell Point, the Alzheimer's Association, those kind of efforts, and uh, know that you can't be a good caregiver if you yourself are suffering. Sure, sure. Um, well, we appreciate you coming out today, Dr. Sheriff, and we're going to be uh, a part of our, our medical breakthrough and discovery series here at Shell Point. We've had four this year, very well attended, and we could not do something that did not include Alzheimer's and memory care. It touches so many lives here at Shell Point. So we're happy to, to have you out on March 17th at the Village Church, and I hope all of our residents will come out uh, to learn more about Alzheimer's, a cure, uh, what's new in research and things. And so we appreciate you being with us uh, today, Dr. Sheriff. Well, thank you so much for the partnership and the opportunity. And now it's time to take a look at today's happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Hello and welcome to the Happenings segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley. And I'm Caitlin Vanskoy. And we're going to tell you the activities offered for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start with 745 Men's Bible Study. They'll be in the Osprey Room on the island. And then we have pickleball at 8 o'clock. That's on the game courts behind the Resident Activity Center. Also at 8 o'clock, the men's match play tennis will be going on down at the Woodlands. Now you'll find Lily and Company Jewelers here at the Resident Activity Center at 845 to help you with any jewelry issues that you might have. At 9 o'clock, we have Jirasi Travel in the Egret Room, and she will be here till noon. Also at 9 o'clock, we have the Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton. They'll be in the art studio down in the tunnel. And we have a Fine Mark Investment Roundtable in the Manatee Room at 10 o'clock. Also at 10 o'clock, the men's match play tennis will be down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Now the Mile Yacht Sailing Club will be there at the Commons Lake with their boats sailing at 10.15. And we have a Health Connections class at 11.30, Agility and Flexibility. That'll be in the Tarpon Room and it's currently full. Here's Caitlin. She's going to tell you about our afternoon lineup. Well, thank you, Bev. We start at 1245 with a Health Connections class, Advanced Senior Strength. That'll be held in the Tarpon Room on the island, and that one is currently closed. At 1 o'clock, we have Chess in the Library Lounge. And we move to 130 for the Model Train Room. That'll be open from 130 to 330 today in the Train Room down in the Island Tunnel. At 145, we have Balance and Mobility for Beginners in the Tarpon Room. And then we move to 215 for Knitters Anonymous. They'll be gathering in the Osprey Room. Come out for Jazz and Stuff at 2.30, the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands for a free jazz concert. And at 3 o'clock, another Health Connections, Pilates Stretch in the Tarpon Room. We move to 5 o'clock for the Singles Table that'll be available at the Crystal Dining Room. And Church Choir Rehearsal will be held in the Choir Room of the Village Church at 5.45. Our last Wednesday activity is Prayer and Praise at the Village Church at 7.15. Well, thanks so much. We're happy to see you here today. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Coleth with your Academy information for Wednesday. At 9 o'clock, our knitting class continues in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. At 10 o'clock, local efforts to combat human sex trafficking in Southwest Florida and in the United States will take place in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands for those who signed up. At 10.15, Google Workshops will continue in the Technology Teaching Center of the Island. At 1 o'clock, Experiencing Colored Pencil Painting continues in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. Also at 1 o'clock, Intermediate Bridge continues in the Game Room at the Woodlands. Tomorrow, we have iPhone Basic Apps, the Messages app with Bruce Findlay of Sundial, and Session 3 of the Story of Pakistan and Afghanistan with Professor Adrian Kerr. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is roasted cauliflower with grilled sweet potato and coconut broth. 
The dinner special is the All-American Buffet for fourteen ninety five. The soup of the day is tortellini and sausage. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is an Italian sausage sandwich with peppers, onions, and fries for seven seventy five. The dinner special is grilled shrimp for eight seventy five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are mussels marinara for fourteen ninety five, or blackberry and green peppercorn veal chop for twenty two ninety five. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with Peter Nanfelt, one of our elders and uh, certainly a person. Uh, Peter, you've been involved in organizations, uh, denom the Christian denomination of the Christian Missionary Alliance uh, for uh, qu uh, quite some time. And we're actually here to talk about uh, missions of organizations like the church, or like a denomination, and uh, the reason for that is that we've been working on and have come to uh, settle on a mission statement, a new mission statement for the Village Church. And uh, I've been here about uh, three years and uh, going through a process uh, to get to that place where we can try to articulate what this church is about going forward, and so we've gotten to that place where we're, we're doing that. But we ought to have some conversation about uh, why we do such a thing as uh, craft mission statements. What's, you know, you've been involved with uh, an organization in terms of leadership uh, that has had to consider a mission statement, and uh, so why do, why do we have such, uh, such things in organizations like ours? That's an important question, mm -hmm. and uh, I, think, I think you were right in taking some time to think about this and craft it because it, mission statements don't come easily, mm -hmm. and they take a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of study, and you end up with just a few words. But to get the right words takes a bit of effort. Well, you know, us preachers have a harder time encapsulating things. We can we could be expansive and talk forever about something, but true? to boil it down to a statement that captures the essence of who we are is exactly. tough. Well, I think that's it. It's capturing the essence of who we are. It's the reason why we exist. Why do we have the village church? What is the purpose of having the village church? And so I think the mission statement answers that question. Mm -hmm. Why? Do we have the village church? And the mission statement uh, clearly uh, states that. Mm -hmm. And what kinds of things uh, do we have we had to do in order to come to a conclusion? Uh, not that the mission statement is a conclusion; it really isn't. It, yeah. it, take, it takes us forward, but uh, but there's a process, isn't there, of coming to that place where uh, you can uh, really begin to articulate such a thing? Right. Uh, a mission statement we just can't pick out of the air. It takes uh, a lot of uh, study, research pondering, in our case, a lot of prayer and seeking God about what he has called our church to be. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we did a mission statement for the denomination, we did some research into our past, mm -hmm. what was the original intent of the CNMA when it got started. And I'm glad to say that the basic intent of the CNMA has not changed in 125 oh, years. No. It is to know Christ, preach Christ, and to complete his great commission. Mm -hmm. But uh, our mission statement uh, formulated a number of years ago needed some refining. And so in order to do that, we went back, saw the history, and made sure we understood that and got an input from a lot of people. And uh, then eventually, through a lot of effort and, and study, we came up with a shorter statement that I think is more applicable. And I think basically that's what's happened here at the Village Church. Yeah. We uh, did a lot of research and study and were able to come up with a statement, I think, that reflects the reason that we exist as a church. Right. A big part of that was what we call strategic planning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think strategic planning ever ends, at least the way I envision right. it. Uh, but we had to get to a certain place in which we analyzed uh, where we have been, mm -hmm. what kind of people we are. We looked at uh, demographic information with respect to our community and the surrounding community. Mm -hmm. Uh, we looked at how God has been moving. I think that's an important part of uh, that planning process to see uh, what's God been doing. It's, it's really, hopefully, a mission statement uh, for a church isn't uh, simply a human enterprise. Right. It's something that we recognize that uh, God is doing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, part of it has to do with the uh, prayerful consideration by the people who have been entrusted with, with the kind of uh, uh, direction setting, vision casting right. for an organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, probably the reason why 
I didn't show up three years ago saying this is our exactly. <laughs> this is our mission. Exactly. That would have been a fool's errand, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so, how does uh, when we when we establish a, a mission statement, how does that help an organization? Obviously, it's based upon what things have happened in the past, but how does that help an organization going forward? I think it has. Uh, I think it has several practical uses. Um, you know, organizations, whether they are secular or uh, spiritual, church organizations, uh, can easily get involved in all kinds of stuff. Um, churches. Um, end up over the years adding on this and adding on that, different programs, different efforts. It seems to me that when you have a mission statement that's well-crafted, every time the possibility of a new program, a new initiative comes forward, you can test its validity by looking at the uh, mission statement. Mm -hmm. is, this, is this particular effort going to contribute to our purpose? Is it going to help us accomplish our mission or not? Mm -hmm. And that's true also with uh, expenditures, what money we may right. spend. Uh, when we spend money for a particular thing, is that going to contribute toward achieving our mission? If it, if it is, we might want to consider spending that money. If it isn't, no, we won't spend that money. Yeah, so that's so a very practical uh, use of a mission statement. Yeah, the resource allocation issue is very interesting. Because Whether it's personnel or money. Personnel or money, that's yeah. exactly right. And, of course, personnel a lot of times is money. That's right. <laughs> you know, so you have to pay personnel most of the time. Right. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to me. Uh, I, I almost shudder to think this, to, that I ought to be able to look at our budget, for instance. Yeah. And then, and then sort of uh, extrapolate what our mission is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how, how, how valuable, or how, it's going to be a valuable process to do that, but I'm not, I'm not sure I'm ready to hear the, the truth about that. Because sometimes. there may be some things in there that we shouldn't be spending that, money on. That's yeah. possible, yeah, yes. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. So in any event, it, it helps us uh, sort of manage resources, mm -hmm. make decisions about programming. Right. But all, what else? Uh, well, I think yeah. it also leads us eventually then to what, what I refer to as a vision statement or a picture of what our church will look like. Mm. This, is our, this is our purpose. This is our mission. Okay, well, what does it then look like if we're going to achieve that goal? And, uh, you know, you look in the, in the Bible, there are lots of examples when uh, God gave Noah a mission to build the ark. Mm -hmm. He then gave him a picture of what the ark was going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. And it was all detailed, measurements and all that sort of thing. When Moses built the tent of meeting, same thing. Mm -hmm. He had that mission to build the tent of meeting or the tabernacle, but then there was a big picture of what it was going to look like. Sure. So eventually, I think uh, as we move forward now, we're going to try to describe mm -hmm. what does a church with our mission statement look like? Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually then, everybody goes to work. Mm -hmm. And that's the strategy part. Right. where we put people's gifts to, to work in order to achieve that picture. My, my son-in-law is a builder, a contractor, mm -hmm. and it's very interesting. He, that's his mission. He builds, but then he has an architect make the plans, mm -hmm. and then I like to see him go at it because he has the, vision, the mission, he has the, the vision, and then he, get, he contracts people to, that are electricians, that are plumbers, that are... Um, uh, other kinds of, of masons or whatever he needs, yeah. and then they all go to work to build that building. And eventually, as the Village Church, we have our mission, we'll develop this picture, which we have partially in place, and then we get everybody working, using their skills and abilities to accomplish that. That's right. And I'm really looking forward to that process. And actually, we're, started, we're sort of in the midst of that uh, next phase of it right. uh, because I'm preaching through it. Good. You know, our, our, our mission statement really has is uh, building a community of forgiveness, purpose, and hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah, say that again. It's uh, building a community of forgiveness, purpose, and hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah, and so uh, we've already started kind of working through some of that. Uh, and uh, what does it look like to be a community, our, our people of forgiveness? Right. What does it look like to be a people exactly. of purpose? And what kind of purposes do we have? And uh, I would think that our purposes would certainly be congruent with the denomination's mm -hmm. purposes in terms of fulfilling the Great Commission. Right. And we'll talk about some of those things. And, mm -hmm. and certainly we're invested in a lot of that kind of thing. And then hope, what kind of, uh, what does it look like to be a people who have great expectations for uh, the future? Even hope though, in this life and hope to come. That's exactly, hope that's exactly right. And uh, so I'll, uh, I'm in the midst of preaching through that. Eventually we'll sort of derive some core values out of, uh, out of that vision. 
and then begin to look strategically at where we can head in the future. So it's a big job. It, it, is, a, it is a big job. But it's exciting, you know, you know because this is what God's called us to do I, and I, to be. I, tr I trust so. I think we're at, we're at a very good place now. Well, thank you for joining me, right. Peter, and uh, our conversation here. Uh, it's an exciting time for me as the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I think the church leadership in getting to this place where we've taken some time to evaluate, try to chart a course ahead of time, and uh, really craft a, a very succinct and memorable statement that can take us forward. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us on Village Church Connections, and we hope to see you very soon. Thanks for joining us for today's program. Tomorrow, we'll listen to Ray Boyce as he gives us a taste of what to expect in his academy class on Shakespearean tragedies. We'll take a look back at the Waters Watch neighborhood launch and Springs expansion event that took place earlier this month. And Caitlin Vanskoy will get the story on the Spot Player Readers Cafe event coming next week. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, March 16th. I'm Rich Nation thanking you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.